Right. Today we're going to talk about bad neighbors. How many of you have bad neighbors? Say me. <laughs> Guys, you didn't really have to say that. They could get saved and you don't want to say bad things about people. <laughs> yeah, we all have had our run-ins with bad neighbors. And um, today there's a... Uh, a word from the Lord for us I believe it's prophetic I believe it's for where God's taking our church and it's when we use other people as excuses to not to not walk into the things that God's calling us to walk into and it's about like some of you right now your, your neighbors never came here because they're bad neighbors the end go home we're good some of you are like already convicted, won't talk to my neighbors, you know, but let's see what's, what's God's going to say to us today. We're reading from the book of Numbers, chapter 13. And um, it's a jumpy kind of scripture because I'm going to read one verse and then I'm going to drop down to <clears throat> somewhere. I'll tell you. 26. Okay, good. So Numbers chapter 13, verse 1. Let's read that one together. One and two. Two, three, go. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, No, no, we're going to do two. Uh, sorry. Right. Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel from each tribe of their fathers. You shall send a man everyone a leader among them we just talked about the leaders of the youth ministry we just talked about those of you who want to be involved in leadership <laughs> um, or in the church leadership you didn't see what I saw down there that was funny um, net 26 let's read together we might as well now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh they brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land and they told him and said we went to the land where you sent us it truly flows with check this is funny <laughs> with milk She's so literal. I love it. It flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. And then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants. The descendants of Anak came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. Amen. Father, I pray that you bless your word tonight. Lord, I thank you for what you're about to teach us because I realize tonight that this word is a well. This word is a deep spring of life, oh God. I realize that this, this word will open up to us things that were, were shut to us, oh Father, up until this moment. And Lord, if you've chosen such a time as this to open such a word, it means that you are preparing us to possess the land, to take territory, oh God, which before this time we were not prepared to take but I pray in the name of Jesus that you would anoint me God anoint my mind and my spirit my lungs and my body I pray oh God for an anointing in the atmosphere in the church house today and even online I pray for the spirit of the Lord to hover and find a place to rest in this house I declare over this place that there is no obstacle there is no wall there is no barrier against the moving of the Holy Spirit in this place I knock down every 
every single erected wall in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost and I thank you God that this is your house we are your children you are our king and we bring an offering to you an offering of ourselves a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto you O God in Jesus name and all of God's people agree with a loud Amen. Amen. High five two people. Tell them they look fabulous for a Wednesday and have your seats. Praise the Lord. I want to say thank you to all of you for being here in the middle of the week on Wednesday. Traditionally hump day. It's the hard day of the week. How many of you had a fantastic day today? wonderful I'm glad to hear it you know at the very least there's breath in your body amen at the very least you're you're sitting next to somebody who is also alive <laughs> beats the alternative I thank God for that uh, pastor Kurt is not feeling so well today he's good don't blow up his phone he's resting um, let him know that you, you can send text messages he's very appreciative of those but today um, I know he's watching hi hon um, he and Summer are, are curled up on the couch watching TV watching us on TV we turn around and wave to him and say hi pastor Kurt <laughs> okay wonderful all right so um, I want to tell you about my neighbor. So one day, it was pouring rain, like pouring rain, dreadful rain. If my life group knows my neighbors, okay, they, the ones who come over to my house every week, they know my neighbors really, really well. And one day it's pouring rain, so I'm sitting in my driveway in my car with my windows rolled up, and I'm not going to go inside just yet, because it's pouring. So I'm waiting for the rain to ease up, but it's so thick. It's such one of those rains where the drops are huge. You know what I'm talking about? It's one of those rains. And so I'm just, you know, meditating and I'm just sitting there and enjoying it. And all of a sudden, you know, like in the horror movies where it's dead quiet and all of a sudden you hear boom and then there's a face that happened. I was right near my driver's seat and on my left, there's this face big face big white face with mascara just streaming down no really you're I'm telling you it is a good thing I have a strong and solid heart because at that very moment my life flashed before my eyes it was my neighbor my neighbor has never said hello to me some days I say hello to her and she looks she just pretends that she doesn't hear me. And I don't know if it's, you know, I didn't know what it was at first. So on this very rainy day, when my neighbor puts her face up against my window, I freak all the way out. I'm like, <laughs> and then she does this. And I'm like, <laughs> she's like, <laughs> I'm like, mm, yes. She's like, hi, I just wanted to say hello. I said, hello. And she's like, okay, bye. And then she walks over to her house and goes inside. The day after, I thought, well, we broke the ice. And now we can say hello to each other all the time. So the next day, I was like, hello. And she just passed strange bird very strange bird that's my neighbor and um, I'm surrounded by all kinds of neighbors and the thing about this one neighbor is that I've never invited her to lunch I've never invited her for coffee I've never invited her to my church I've never said a word to her about Jesus she probably doesn't even know I'm a Christian because she's a really bad neighbor <laughs> You're like, no, a bad neighbor is the kind that have a machete and then they're cussing you. No, I don't have those kinds of neighbors. But I'm, I have used the, the reason that this lady is not approachable. She is impossible to deal with. I can't communicate with her as a reason to never share God with her, to never share the kingdom of God with her. And the Holy Spirit convicted me about that today. And I was like, Lord, but you do not understand. He does though. Um, in the scripture that we're reading today, 
God has already promised the children of Israel a promised land. Remember that? Right. The, the, quiz time. It's Wednesday. The land is called Canaan. Who is the father of Canaan? Yeah. What? Yeah. Yes, Sharon. Very, only Sharon learns her lessons in this church. She put her hand up. The rest of you just screaming stuff out and I'm not hearing. Yes, Ham. And Ham was the son of? Very good. Fabiola. Noah. Only Fabiola knew it. You'll get it eventually. And so, I don't know if you know this, but this is something that you probably want to know. For those of you who are ready for me to start screaming and preaching, calm down. Calm down. <laughs> calm down. I want you to get this word. This, was, this is a very important word for me, and it will be for you as well. Um, do you remember, how many of you remember the story about Moses sending 12 spies into the promised land? Say, I remember. Okay, let's see if we can find 12 men in this church. Quick, stand up. One, two, three. That means it's almost four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Brilliant. Come on. If you're standing, come on up. I love the men of this church. I'm going to make this one in the green shirt, Joshua. He's, he's tall. <laughs> he's like, man, I should have never stood. Now I got to end up on the pulpit. I knew this lady would have got me up there one day. You thought that, didn't you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, you smell her right there. Good. Twelve. Man, I am glad about the men that are up here. I know there are lots of men in the congregation, but I think the Lord picked the right 12 men today. You know why? Because the Bible said that God said to send 12 men, but not just men. He said, send princes. Fix your faces. <laughs> Did they change? Did their demeanor change? Najee said no. Uh, you, you, know, you, can, you can tell royalty when they walk in a room. No, you really can. They walk different. They talk different. They look different, right? Even if they don't dress differently, they still have a, a different air about them. You know, the queen carries her little purse. How many of you ever saw that little purse? You know she's packing in there. You know she's got a gun in that purse. Just letting you know that. But she's so quiet and cute, and we have the same birthday, but she's carrying a gun in there. What? Quiet little dangerous woman. Plus, I don't think she has an expiration date. That lady goes on and on and on. <laughs> anyway, the Bible says when God said send spies, he didn't say send any spies. He said pick a prince from every tribe. Pick a prince from every tribe. That was very important. Somebody check that thermostat and make sure the AC is on. He said, pick a prince from every single tribe. And that's important to me. Why? Because God's saying, if you're going to send people to spy out a promise, pick people with royalty in their blood. Why is that important to you? Because I'll tell you why. First of all, let me, let me just um, make a, a disclaimer here. God didn't want spies. God didn't tell Moses to send spies. In the book of Deuteronomy, God said, Moses, when he was recounting what was happening, he said to the people, I didn't want to send spies. God didn't want me to send spies. You wanted me to send spies. Why would God not want them to send spies? Because he had already promised them the land. The land was already good. The land was already theirs for the taking. You don't need a reconnaissance mission. You don't need to go and find information about how bad the land is or how able you are to take it. As long as God says it's yours, then it's yours. You don't need anybody to go spy out. Reconnaissance means they're going to find information. Why do you need more information other than God said, what I have for you is for you. But no, we are like that. We want to check all our boxes, dot all our I's, and cross all our T's like if it depends on us. And God's saying, no, 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 no. But you know what? He said, since you're begging, go ahead, pick 12. So they picked the most handsome man in Judah. They picked the strongest man in Gad. They picked the man with the shiniest head in Reuben. <laughs> they picked the, 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 the richest man in Naphtali. They picked the cutest one in Benjamin. Okay, I can't go on with all this, but you get the point. You get the point. Thank you, sons. You can step back. Twelve men. But this is what the Spirit of the Lord said to me. He says, up to this day, if you're sending someone into territory that I promised, like Jamaica, send a prince. 
He said, send a prince. Don't send a pauper. Don't send someone who is not a part of the family. Want to know why? You know, we say be a member and then you can go. You know why? Because we want to send family. Why? Because a prince has three very special things going for him. One, he knows whatever daddy inherits, I inherit. Somebody's listening. Yeah, whatever belongs to the king eventually belongs to me. So if I go to spy out a land and it is a good land and my dad is going to inherit it, then I'm going to say it is a good land. Let's take it. It's like when you work in a restaurant as opposed to owning the restaurant. I saw that happen before. I go into a restaurant, people slamming stuff, people not being nice to me or something like that. And all of a sudden I go back the next week and it's like I hung the moon. What happened? They bought the restaurant. And when you own a thing, you treat it differently. When it's yours, you are invested in it. So a prince will always be invested in daddy's inheritance. And that's why God puts his biggest jobs to sons. That's why he will entrust the most important and the most difficult jobs to the sons that he can trust. My first question to you is, are you a son that God can trust? You can answer if you want. You don't have to. Second question. Well, a second thing. The reason why he sent sons is because they got something in their blood. The blood that flows in the sons, the princess vein, is the same blood that flows in daddy's vein. That's why God can trust you. You might say, why would you get a job? Because you are a believer when somebody else is more qualified. I'll tell you why. Because there's something else flowing in your blood. You have royal blood. When you are washed in the blood of the lamb at Calvary, a transfusion happens. And with the old man goes the old blood. And with the new man, you are risen in Christ. And the blood of Jesus is the same blood that the devil can identify fire the devil is like a mosquito he can smell the blood of Jesus from a mile away and he knows that if he touches you woo, I don't think you get it but if you ever had a daddy like mine once when I was in college this boy made a mistake and hit me remember that day Jude mm-hmm the only thing worse than my daddy is my brother. <laughs> he made a mistake and hit me. And daddy made a mistake and found out. <laughs> and he didn't ask a single question. He didn't ask if I deserved it, if I didn't deserve it. He just got a machete and he put it in his trunk and he drove all the way from San Fernando, all the way to Curep, St. Augustine, University of the West Indies. I don't know what he was gonna do with that. Praise Jesus, he never found the person. But he drove around that whole school because you don't hit my kid. You don't touch my kid. You know, and then he picked me up and we driving around. I'm like, what are you going to do if you fight him? What are you going to do? He's like, just run him over. That's just, no, he said you bunks him. That's what he said. So I'm like, but what's the cutlass in the trunk for? He's like, that's just to frighten him. But that's dad. Why? Because this is his blood and don't touch his blood. And if you think that a father who is, who is an earthly father knows how to protect his children, how much more does your heavenly father, who he says sees when one sparrow falls to the earth and he cares for them, cares about you. Do you, do you want to know why no weapon formed against you will prosper? Because your daddy has your interest at heart and anything that touches you has to answer to your daddy. The next thing is sons have the father's kingdom in their spirit. You only want to enlarge territory. You won't go on a mission trip to make a name for yourself, right? No, you'll go on a mission trip to put down the flag of the kingdom of your father. You will go anywhere. You'll go to the, to the metro and the highways and the hedges. Not so that somebody will know your name. You'll sing your song not to get a prize. You'll sing your song so you could put your daddy's flag in the places where you've spread the message. That's another reason why you'll send the prince. And the last reason is because they know their history. Sons get direct intel from the king. So they only, 
But they not only know that daddy is capable, but they know all the victories. They know all the wars. They know all the times that God had brought Israel through. They know that they went through the Red Sea. They know that their fathers are the original 12 sons of Israel. They have a different sense. And you as sons and daughters have a solemn responsibility to treat your sojourn on the earth as if you were an ambassador of God. Not as if you were. Paul said you are ambassadors of a better country. And you're sent here to put the flag of your daddy upon the land which he has given you to take. But we walk around pretending to be like the enemy and not identifying with our dad. Okay, so he sent princes. This is why. He said, the land is yours. I'm giving it to you. But there were these two guys, Joshua, where is he? Right there at the end. <laughs> and Caleb, where is he? All right, Joshua and Caleb. These two had watched way too many Mission Impossible movies. WWF, Star Trek. <laughs> I don't know, that one didn't fit, sorry. Don't tell me what to see. All right. So all these 12 sons are going into the land to spy it. Go ahead. Kind of go together, stick together. Jude, you have any spy music up your sleeve? These are the most obvious spies I ever saw. <laughs> For those of you who feel awkward right now, Marlon, I'm watching you now. Marlon's like, I'm not, I'm assimilating with the natives. <laughs> yeah, do we have a, a periscope? <laughs> All right. Let me tell you what they did while they're still spying. Thank you, Xavier, for making this as real as you can. Zaka, see you're sitting by your daddy. <clears throat> how many of you know how long they spied for? P put your hand up if you know. Sharon, 10 days, mm -mm, close. I'm so glad you don't know because when you find out, it's gonna teach you a really valuable lesson. Yes, 20 days, 12 days, no. 40 days, very good. 40 days. And let me tell you what they did. They rolled around on the ground. <laughs> I just said that because I wanted somebody to roll on the ground. <laughs> they crept up in the middle of every, they looked in the valleys and they looked in the hills. And all of a sudden they came to one place called the Valley of Eshkol. And when they got there, the Bible said that they picked a cluster of grapes. And this is just a small representation, right? But the bunch of grapes was so huge, two men had to carry it home. So pretend. Can somebody help Joshua? These grapes are super heavy. Two men had to carry these grapes home. What? big grapes like this I think it was just a really big bunch can you imagine and God saying to them I've given you this land this is your land but this is another thing besides the fact that they stood there for they, they, they sojourned there for 40 days I bet you didn't know this as well let me ask another quiz question how many of you like quiz Good, one, good, good enough for me. Just needed one member to support. <laughs> um, how many of you know how many years they had already been in the wilderness when this happened? How many of you say 40? Put your hand up. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody, anybody else want to take a wild guess? 40 days? Mm -mm. They had already crossed the Red Sea. They had already done all of that by this time. 30 years. 30 years. No. Uh, no. Two. About two years. Wait a minute. My theology is now all messed up, I hear you saying to yourself. 
What are they doing at the edge of the promised land two years after God said the promised land was yours? Remember this journey took them 40 years in the wilderness? So we have this idea that they walked around in the wilderness and bumped into Canaan 40 years after leaving. But that's not what happened. Two years after leaving Egypt, they bump into Canaan. But something happens that causes a two-year sojourn, which could have been a 14-day sojourn, to become a 40-year journey. And this is what happened. This is two years when Moses sends 12 spies into Canaan to spy out the land. They've only left Egypt for two years. They could have already gone and inherited what God said was theirs. Do you know what God is saying to you? There are some of you and you have missed the boat. That God made you a promise or you had a calling from the Lord and two years maybe after he told you this is what was going to happen, it never happened. And you've been going around and around and around, never seeing the fulfillment of what you've expected God to do in and through you. And you're wondering why you can never inherit the promise. Well, maybe today you get to find out what happened. What caused them from not being able to enter into a land just two years after? Well, let me show you what happened. They came back and when all the people saw the grapes, how would we act if God said today, this is what I'm going to do for you, Hope NYC. And he dropped a billion dollars and he said, share it equally. How would you act? Go ahead. <laughs> Lord, whoever was excited, do your thing. <laughs> The rest of you will learn to be excited for us. <laughs> That's how they acted when you guys came back. When you guys came back with the fruit, that's how the people of Israel acted. But it didn't last very long. And that's what happens in the kingdom of God so often. We get a revival. We get a word from the Lord. And we get all excited about it. But sure as, as day comes, there's somebody in the pack that says, I don't know if we should get that excited. God says, okay, it's time for you to build a building. And everybody's like, Wah! but there's somebody that says, I, 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 I hold up. Jude, they always have a bad report. There's somebody who just excels and their gifting is making good news, bad news. Amen. Amen. And that's what happens. So here we are, big bunch of grapes, enough grapes for all of us to fill our bellies. But the 10 men, I'm going to make these Joshua and Caleb right here. The 10 other men begin to give a, a bad report. The Bible says an evil report to the people. So go now and tell them how bad things are. Go. Just find your friends and tell them. They like you. They won't think you're crazy. Ooh. You guys, no, 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 Lorenzo, you entirely too happy. It's bad news. Bad news. No, no, what's all that smiling going on over there? Very good. Say it's bad. It's bad out there, guys. It's bad. Stay there. <clears throat> all right, good. You ever notice how fast bad news can spread? You ever notice how long it takes somebody to hear a bit of good news? But if anything goes wrong anywhere in like 10 seconds flat, what is the deal with bad news? Why is it so viscous? Why does it move like liquid? Why is bad news a life of its own? Why does it have a life of its own, it seems? I'll tell you why. Because the people of God are less busy than the demons in hell. Or devils are about their father's business. And those who are of the devil are about their father's business. And they find the airwaves to share their father's business. But I wish the church of God would realize that we have a job too. To share our father's business. And to tell the world that we have good news. There is a gospel. Really, really, really good news. Mm. The Bible says when the ten spies went and began to give the bad news that the people in Israel, the people of Israel began to wail and mourn. <laughs> I 
and Joshua and Caleb. Let me tell you something. If ever I had to pick two men in the whole Bible to be on a team with, these are the two men I'm picking. I want a Joshua and I want a Caleb. I want one who is 40 years older than the other one, but they have that same indomitable spirit. I want to know that you got a 20-year-old going and you got a 50-year-old going and you got a 60-year-old going and they all have the same attitude. We can take the land. It is a good land. God has already given us the land. We have the victory. Mm. That's how they were. They didn't care how big the giants were. Hear the report these 10 men went and told the people. And this is what God said to tell you. Be careful how you report it. Mm. In Deuteronomy 1, are you tired? Are you good? Good. In Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 1 and 34, oh my goodness. I feel like it's prophetic. I really feel like it is. I really feel like it is. Because these two go to Jamaica tomorrow. And they're going to be doing a lot of that. Carrying long, long pieces of wood to help build a school for some kids in the middle of nowhere. Can we just say amen? amen. Deuteronomy 1.34, and the Lord heard the sound of your word. Can we just point our fingers this way, point our hands this way to them? I just, I, I, can't, I can't shake it. I can't shake what the Lord is saying. In the name of Jesus, I pray that fruit, 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 fruit. I pray that abundant fruit will come from the works of your hands and from your labor. I pray in the name of Jesus that your report will be a good report. That you will say that indeed, God has given us the land. God has made a way for us. And he has defeated every giant in the land. We can take it. Amen. Hear what God says in 134 of Deuteronomy. It says, and the Lord heard the tone or the sound of the words and was angry. Listen, he didn't hear the, the words. He heard the tone. It's the word kof and it means the tone. What? Your wife ever told you it's not what you said, it's how you said it. And you like, what? <laughs> I see some of you men like, oh no, this is biblical? <laughs> yeah, psychologists will tell you uh, that 80% of what you see is not what's coming out of your mouth. It's your body language, it's the tone of your voice, it's your attitude. <clears throat> like if he says, yes, I love you. <laughs> and you're like, thanks. Like if you say something stupid, you know, like, honey, you never tell me you love me. <gasps> well, if I change my mind, I will let you know. <laughs> I told you already, and if I change my mind, you'll be the first to No, Kurt didn't tell me any of those things. <laughs> you guys are like looking at me with all kinds of sympathy right now. <laughs> you get it? It's not what he's saying, it's, it's how he's saying it. But apparently God was the same way because God heard the tone of their words and he was angry. Kol is the word tone. You see, God called it good and they called it dangerous. God says it's mine and they said, they said, I'll be killed in it. God says, I can't lose. And they say, there's no way you can win. God says it flows with milk and honey and you say the neighbors are awful. And this is what I'm asking you today. What has God said to you, but your report sounds a little bit different. God's saying, be careful what you're saying. Be careful the tone you're taking with God. When he says, I've promised you this, and you say, but why didn't it happen yet? Well, if you promised it, then why did I have to go through X, Y, and Z? God's saying, I'm not okay with your tone. <laughs> mm. When you were small, you get backhand for that, right? Bam. No, they don't do those anymore. I don't want to know. <laughs> Are you good? Thank you. You look great. Your report will, in, in, okay, this is for everybody here. Three, your report will either encourage or discourage other people. How you tell what God told you to tell is either going to be an encouragement or a discouragement to other people. And honey, check yourself before you, wreck, you check yourself. Check yourself before you give the information that God is giving. Hear what Numbers 13, uh, 32 says. And they spread the bad report. What? Like butter. There are some people that do have that gifting to spread a bad report about the land among the Israelites. He said, they said, the land we travel through will devour anyone who goes to live there. They're saying the land will eat you up. And then they say the people were huge. We saw giants there. The descendants of Anak. They said next to them, we felt like grasshoppers. And here was the other part. And that's what they were thinking too. How do they know what the giants were thinking? 
Because when you want to give a bad report, you'll always embellish it. Oh yeah, yeah. You think that the people who come to bad talk, your brother and sister, are telling you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the no friend. They're giving you the giant version of the story. There is actually no account of any of these Israelites bumping in to any giants anywhere. In fact, in fact, 38 years later, Joshua goes back to Canaan remember Moses is now dead none of these people made it and Joshua is gonna send a couple spies in to Canaan and guess who they meet they meet a harlot named Rahab remember that story and this is the same Canaan this is 38 years later and hear what she said she said the moment we heard about what your God had done for you our hearts failed us for fear I want to ask you what she was talking about she said the moment we heard how he parted the Red Sea for you we do you understand what she was saying we've been afraid of you for 40 long years you could have taken Jericho 38 years ago and don't you know that the Canaanites were less scared 38 years later yeah when are you most afraid of terrorists right after the attack right yeah after 9-11 after 9-11, nobody's going anywhere. Like, the, the, if you think it's bad in the airports now, after 9-11, they were saying things like four and five hours ahead of your flight. That's if you're going anywhere. You understand why? Because fear levels were so high because it had just happened. But give it a few years. The only reason why airport security is as bad as it is is because people love the power they get. Like, Xavier got a pat down the other day. Jude was, <laughs> Jude was telling me, highly inappropriate. Highly inappropriate. I think Fanny got one the other day. Why? But anyway. <laughs> Joshua and Caleb came back and they said, the land we traveled through and explored. Okay, this is the same land. The first guy said, the land we traveled through and explored. Exactly words will devour anyone who goes to live there Joshua and Caleb the land we traveled through and explored is a wonderful land same exact phraseology they use the same words talking about the same land some of them said it will eat you alive and two of them said it is a wonderful land what is God saying in the same group of people in the same community of people there are most of them who will see a thing that God has promised and see all the problems but you will find two among the twelve there will always be a couple in there who said it's a wonderful land if God says it's our land then we can take the land it doesn't matter that it doesn't look possible it doesn't matter that it's unlikely we serve the God of the impossible we serve the God who makes the mm, you guys have to get this in your spirit Israel tore their clothes you can put your fruit down now so this is what Israel decided because guess who they wanted to believe more take a while guess go the 10 why because of herd mentality wait a minute we live there don't we we, we live there, herd mentality. They believe the majority, and the majority said it is a bad land. So guess what they did? All of Israel tore their clothes, and they, wanted, they, they said, let us find a new leader. Moses didn't even go. And they're ready to fire Moses. You want to be a pastor? Let's fire. Yeah, hear what they said. Let's find a new leader and go back to Egypt. Wow. Two years, bro. Two years. <laughs> and they're ready to go back to Egypt. Oh, my goodness. It's like some of you have a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend who threatens to break up with you every single time. Or a spouse who's threatening to leave you. I mean, I'm sure you're like, just go. Stop clapping. You're not married. <laughs> no, you can't live in that kind of misery. That is not, that, that is not healthy for you. All right. So the first thing they want to do is let's get a new leader and head back to Egypt. 
And the next thing they want to do is stone Moses, Joshua, and Caleb. Why are they stoning you? What did you do? All you did was bring a good report. Sometimes taking the good news is risky. But it's not, <clears throat> it's not the giants who will stone you. It's the people who won't do what you will do for the kingdom of God who will pick up the stones. Oh my goodness. That, that went over good in the front. Um, I'll move on because I want to finish. Thank you, sons. The traction of a negative spirit is in direct contempt and doubt against God. The traction of a negative spirit report I could say is in direct contempt and doubt against God in other words God is saying if you are the bearer of the bad report that kind of traction that you're developing is a sign and it is an indicator to God that you are in direct contempt and doubt of him there's scripture for that God says in his word he said because you have shown contempt to me. This is Numbers 14, 31 and 32. He said, you will never. He said, his exact wording was beautiful. He said, you will drop dead in this world. <laughs> he said that. He said, you will drop dead in this wilderness. He said, oh, that's not funny. It's just how God said it. I checked the original, guys. It really literally is. He said, you will fall down dead. In this wilderness, he says, I will let your children experience the land which you have spurned. He said, because you did not believe. Because I gave you a good thing and you scorned it. Because I gave you a woman of God and you scorned her. Because I gave you a godly family and you deserted them. Because I gave you a church that you could honor God in and you turned your back on that. Because I gave you a ministry and it, it, you got too tired to do it and you spurned it. Mm. Because I gave you a financial miracle so that you could do what you said you would do but you acted like you forgot. He said, your children will experience the land which you have spurned, but your bodies will drop in the wilderness. And then he said, guys, this is the part I was telling you about. For each day you spend exploring, you will wander for a year in the wilderness. For each day you spend exploring. So if you ever wanted to know how God came up with the whole 40 year deal, these guys did it. These guys did it. The last thing. Don't presume, this is good and this is the final one. Don't presume that God will bless in your timing what you fail to seize by faith in God's timing. I'll say it again. Do not presume that when you are ready, don't presume that God will bless in your timing what you fail to seize by faith in God's timing. God says, no. You says, not ready. But then when you're ready, you're like, okay, God, jumping in. And he says, no, thank you. That's not God. It absolutely is God. Let me show you. Numbers 14, 44. After God pronounced this curse and he says, all of you will drop dead in the wilderness. Hear what they say. They're like, you know what? We will go. 14 and 44 says, they presume to go up to the mountaintop. Even though the Ark of the Covenant nor Moses departed from the camp, they presumed that if they would go back up to the mountain and they would fight because God had wanted that response from them initially, that God would go with them now that they were ready. And Moses said, don't go. God will not go with you. And they presume that they know God. They presume that because he said so then, 
that he's still okay with that now and they were going to obey God based on the love of themselves because they didn't want to die in the wilderness not because of their trust in God if they were obeying God because of their trust they would have gone when he said to go in the first place but now because they didn't want to die they were ready to be obedient are you ever obedient because you don't want to face the wrath of God instead of being obedient because you trust the word of God because you know that God is alive it looks like this when when you have an opportunity to sow into the kingdom you don't believe and trust God that if you sow you're gonna reap but on the day before they take your house away on the day when you have zero money and zero dollars you want to say I'm sowing this seed God and you owe me and God is saying it doesn't work like that you miss the moment of your visitation do not presume that that God will bless in your timing what you didn't seize by faith in his timing it's not just what God is doing it is when God is doing it God always waits for the fullness of mm, somebody's got to get this you he waits for the fullness of time to come he can't do it can't be according to your and my calendar Ruthie up to me I would have built that place nine years ago up to me, it would have been a done deal already. We would have been neck deep in death, death, but we would have had a bigger building. But I've learned something about my Jesus. If I do it, if I get my feet in the socks and I wait for that gun and I wait till he says, no, go, then he will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. When it is his will, it is his bill. If he's the one who says to do it, then no weapon that is formed against me will prosper. Not even a bad report but there are many many people God called you into the kingdom he called you into the ministry and you choose to do something else he called you to be a servant of the kingdom he called you to follow he called you to glean he called you to sow but you weren't ready and then when you're ready you're asking God look and now I'm ready because everything else failed Because the business didn't work out. Because the man you gave up Christ for left you. And you're like, okay, God, I'm ready. And he's like, I don't think so. Would God do that? Wouldn't he forgive though? Absolutely. And that's the good news. That he is always willing to forgive us and we are so this is where Jesus makes the biggest difference let me tell you something because those 10 spies died in that wilderness not only did they die but every single person that was in the camp of Israel over 20 years of age died in the wilderness except Joshua and Caleb even Moses Don't settle to drop dead in the desert. There are giants to fight. There are mountains to conquer. It's not an easy road by any means. It takes Caleb 40 years. But he goes up to Joshua and he says when he's 85 years old, on that day when he and Joshua came back with those grapes, Caleb is 40 years old. 40 years later he goes up to Joshua and he said Moses had told me I could take that mountain and I know there are giants on it he said but I'm as strong today as I was 40 years ago now give me my mountain give me my mountain men men like that women like that who don't look at the obstacles and look at the, the problems, but they always instead look onto God, the author and the finisher of our faith. We look onto Christ because we know he made a way for me. Woo. The problem was never Canaan. It was never the land. The land had milk and honey, just like God said. The problem was the neighbors. Because this is what the ten spies says. The ten spies says, they said the Amalekites, they're on the plains. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Hivites, they're on the mountains. 
the Canaanites, there by the ocean, and there by Jordan all along the map. In other words, they're saying it's occupied land, occupied enemy territory. In other words, there's no space for me. There's no space for us in that land. It is already occupied land. There's no room for you where God is sending you. But what you don't understand is he's the God of displacement. When you move into the place that God has taken you to, you're not taking over somebody's place. You're just moving out the people who are keeping your seat warm until the real and rightful owner got to the place that God has assigned to you. And you need to understand that. The place that you're trying to fill might already have somebody in it. But if you are obedient, if you are willing, and if you hear the voice of God, you will watch the enemy just move out of the way. That means seats will open up in the government and seats will open up in the media. It means seats will open up in seats of authority in school boards. It means seats will open up in business. Places that there is no room for you because you don't have the necessary equipment. God says, if you would trust my word, if you would go after what I said to go after in the name of the Lord and as a son, woo, then the land is yours. I just want to end by telling you this. When we first moved here, and um, I stepped out onto Liberty and Lefferts, right? And I saw all of these people walking around looking like me. I swore I woke up and went back to Trinidad. That's how I felt. Because after living in Texas for so long, and not seeing another single brown person that wasn't related to me, I was like, what is happening? Because I don't know what was going on in my life, but I never knew there were so many Caribbean people in New York. I never knew. And when I stepped out on that intersection with Pastor Joe and myself and standing there, do you know what I was waiting for? For evidence. I was looking for grapes. Because we rode the subway just waiting for the voice of God. All he said was go to New York and start a church. I didn't have a launching team. I didn't have any capital. I didn't have any experience. All I had was a city. All I had was a land that God says it's yours. If you'll go, it's yours. And I was dumb enough, but I always told Jody, even back then, I said, we're like Joshua and Caleb. You could be Caleb because he's older. <laughs> and we stepped out on that intersection and I remember that day being a slight bit overwhelmed by what I was seeing and the thousands and thousands of people giving me nasty looks as they were passing by and like move out of my way and me just trying to be friendly. And then I remember really saying to God, God, I couldn't be here. I couldn't be here because when you sent me, I really thought you were going to put me on the 52nd floor of a high rise. And then I saw Omi, but I didn't know her, right? But I knew you, but I didn't know I knew you. I'm standing on an intersection that I've never been standing on in my entire life with Jody, who had never left Texas in her entire life and asking God, am I even in the right place? Did I miss your voice? This is a hostile land. This is not friendly territory. These people are giants to me. They're giants to me. This place is going to eat me up and spit me out. And I look to my side and I see Omi standing there with a little stroller, this girl. And she's looking like she just cried her eyes out all night long. And I went up to her and touched her on the shoulder. And I said, excuse me, are you okay? Because honestly, the only weapon I had in my whole life that day was the fruit of kindness. That's all. And I tapped her on the shoulder and I said, Miss, are you okay? And she said, yes, I'm fine. And then she looked at me again. And she said, 
Sharo? Sharo? And I said, huh? Because how do you, among thousands and thousands of people, bump into the one person in all of New York City that might know your name? I, she said, you don't remember me? And I was like, yeah, no. And she said, it's me, Omi. And I said, Omi? And she said, yeah. And she wiped her eyes and... And she reminded me that many more than a decade before when we were little girls when we were young ladies she used to attend my dad's church in in Trinidad where I was a youth pastor at the age of 13 and Omi was in my youth group and then she left Trinidad and came here to America and I'd never heard a scene from and about her ever again and she got into a very abusive relationship with somebody that was very awful and mean to her and got pregnant and that day was standing at that intersection telling God if you don't do something my life is over God if you're there do something and at the very minute she prays a prayer I touch her on the shoulder and say are you okay Omi asked me that day she's like will you go across the street with me that's where I live in that apartment right there and I said okay and Jody and I went across the street with Omi and and her I remember staring at her and thinking is this the skinny little girl I used to know Omala, Omala was singularly the thinnest human I had ever known but then Judith took the place because <laughs> she didn't look like herself Jude you know why because the land of the giants had eaten her up and spit her out. The land of the giants were there to kill her. And I went over to her apartment and she reached behind the wardrobe and she pulled out a big wad of dollars, single dollars. And she handed it to me and she said, she said, Shar, I, I, she called me Shar. She said, Shar, I, um, I've been saving my tithe all these years and this is for my pastor and I said Omi I'm not a pastor I'm just looking for a place to have a church but I'm not a pastor and her words gave me territory that God promised to me a long time ago three words that changed my life and I never ever want to forget she said you're my pastor <laughs> Lorenzo she said you're my pastor and do you know why that changed my life? Not because somebody called me pastor. I was called pastor for 20 years before that. It was, it was because it was evidence to me that this was my land. That God sent me to this land of the giants to meet the ones that I needed to meet to make sure that they knew that this was theirs. That just because they're big, big giants in the land, if somebody would just be bold enough to go when he says to go, to do what he says to do, regardless of what the opposition and the unlikelihood of anything good coming from it. June, sometimes he says, I want you to, to, to do a drama with a bunch of kids you never met before. And you're like, well, I don't know them and I don't even like them, but I'll do it anyway. If you ever met giants, we've never met giants, come to youth group. But I promise you, if you take the step, when he says to take the step, and when you walk in, and let me tell you something, you know why, why, why people hate this community? Because the neighbors aren't good. But let me tell you something, this is a good and wonderful land. And every single, yeah, this is a good and wonderful land. Queens, New York is a good and wonderful land. And let me tell you something, you can't want to come visit our land and eat our grapes and eat our pomegranates and then go back to your land. No, no, no. If we move, we move together. If we take territory, we're all going at the same time. 
serious we're not leaving anyone behind when God sends us into the land we go all together and yes some of us have got the spirit of Caleb and some of us have got the spirit of Joshua but that's why I believe there's revival coming to the young people because God's saying there's a generation that weren't born in Egypt they were born in the wilderness and that's the generation that's gonna see the promise they're gonna see Queens change they're gonna see this land be taken with the gospel of Jesus Christ and the people of God inherit a land flowing with milk and honey today we want to pray for the sick if you're sick and you need your healing you're getting it right here in this half of the the altar I want you to come but on this side I'm calling the spies I'm calling the sons those of you who might have missed a call why because somebody gave you an evil report and instead of doing what you were supposed to do in the kingdom of God you took a back seat you said silly silly things like yeah I just want to relax That's not a God word. The God word you're looking for is rest. But the rest of the world and the rest of God are two different rests. But if you were afraid that maybe you heard the voice of God but you weren't ready. And you put God on hold for your own comfort because that's what these people wanted. They wanted the grapes, they didn't want the fight. They were we're not capable they said we can't do this that's too big for us this this will swallow us up and they let their own self doubt and their doubt and trust in God cause them to be robbed of ever seeing the promise we want to repent for that we want to say God don't take the promise from us give us another opportunity God tell us again father and there is not a place that our feet won't tread as long as you're going with me yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I shall fear no evil for thou art with me if you are ready to make that commitment to the Lord and say yes I am ready it's my, it might not be everybody but I know there's a son and I know there's a daughter with that call in your spirit and you're saying God whatever it is wherever it is however it is and whenever it is you can choose me then I want you on this side right now guys here first and this is why I believe this is such an important call today Whew. I don't take Wednesday nights lightly I believe that Wednesday nights Sundays are evangelical nights but Wednesdays are commissioning nights I believe that when God is looking for for soldiers and, and, and spies and when God is looking for men and women who will do the hard things that this is where he picks them out that's just my conviction because I, not because this is a sacrifice really what what better is there to do on a Wednesday night any of you ever stayed home on a Wednesday and realize it goes like that you watch one show and it's like nine o'clock and then you think what, 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 what happened I stayed home to rest I didn't even get to rest why is that and why when you come to church it feels like pastor shower preaches for three and a half hours and you feel like we sang for another hour and a half and somehow your half an hour at home seems like it takes six hours here let me tell you why because God gives you the gift of tarry he has the ability to stretch your time for you that is the truth he has the ability to expand your years he has the ability to make your time in his presence last longer than any other time not because you're bored but because you're eating slowly and that's why I believe he commissioned sons and daughters on a Wednesday and this is what it's gonna look like for you don't be scared some of you are like I don't want to preach on the subway pastor Cheryl listen if that's what he called you to do that's what I expect you to do but there was a time in this church and I still want that time I want that time to rise up again a time in this church where there were so many sons and daughters saying I want to preach the gospel where are they where did they go why because they realized that in 2022 the hardest job in the world is preaching the gospel second hardest is being a police officer not for the same reasons third hardest president of the United States of America
But this is what God is saying. He's saying, <laughs> today I, I really sat and thought about the noblest thing in the whole wide world that God could have ever called me to do is to preach this gospel. I don't know how to share that with you. I don't know how to tell you. I've worked in corporate America for so long and done so much and traveled the world and, and made millions of dollars for people, for people, for people. But then when I came to work for the kingdom of God and, and worked for Jesus, I watched him give me in one day what I couldn't get in 10 years, in 20 years. And then watch, test me enough to see if I would keep that for myself or if I would give it back to where it came from and I know I did the right thing when he gave it and because I did because I did I know that again we get to watch God work in a way that only God can work but make no mistake about it this is a house where we raise up sons and daughters this is not a house where you come and you just get petted on your head and and get fat in the spirit this is where we deploy soldiers this is where men and women are equipped with the gospel of Jesus Christ when you some of the young ladies in my life group and the young men said we want to help we want to be there what do we need to do we don't know how to help and when I heard it it didn't make me upset it made my heart leap for joy because all I want is somebody who wants Jesus all I want is somebody who's so eager to hear well done my good and faithful servant you think that you're gonna hear well done my good and faithful servant because you made it by the skin of your teeth no the well done my good and faithful servant is good job you didn't sin that's not what that's for he tells us very plainly that a rich landowner gave talents and then he came back to accept what they had in return your well done doesn't come because you made it your well done becomes because you decided to follow Jesus you won't be saved by your works but you will be justified by them right so in the name of Jesus open your hands all of you if there are any intercessors it's a shame but I don't see that many of them here today but the pastors who are here and the intercessors who are here please come I saw sister Mick brother brother um Brian hallelujah you guys can just come up on the stage with me hallelujah oh glory to God this is a different breed of person the people who are born to the wilderness they don't really care about what they wear they really don't give so much a uh, hoot about people's opinions about them they're like John the Baptist he said give me the camel hair and the leather belt give me locusts and wild honey I'll be okay I just gotta do the will of him who sent me and that's the kind of abandon God is looking for and if that's you I promise you your time is now the timing is important so your prayer is God whatever it is you had assigned to me on the earth let me not miss it oh God let fear let doubt not have a part to play in my life father in the name of Jesus I present you your sons and your daughters uh, those who are saying my life is for your service God uh, my life is all yours God uh, it is not my own uh, it belongs to you father father I pray in the name of Jesus uh, that you will trust them oh God uh, trust them with your kingdom work uh, trust them as princes uh, as sons and daughters uh, as the one whose whose blood oh God is your blood father in the name of Jesus uh, I pray oh Lord uh, that every doubt has to leave their mind right now uh, every spirit that says they're not good enough uh, has to leave them right now uh, everything that's telling them that they can't make it uh, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus uh, and I remind them uh, that it's not by might uh, and it's not by power but it's by my spirit uh, says the Lord of hosts hallelujah in the name of Jesus uh, there's some of you right now uh, and a spirit of laziness oh my goodness can we just talk about it you know it I'm not saying you're lazy I'm saying you're battling that spirit like something crazy if that's you I want you to shoot your hands up high in the air right now I'm telling you Thank you for being honest about this but let me tell you something honesty about this ain't enough you gotta get mad at that thing you gotta get mad at that thing because I heard the word of God say they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion which cannot be removed but which abideth forever they that wait upon the Lord 
shall renew their strength. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and will not faint. So right now, if your hand is up in the air, I want you right now with me to begin rebuking that spirit of laziness, that spirit that says you just want to sit down. You just want to pamper yourself right now in the name of Jesus. Do it. Do it with the anger of the Spirit of God. You need to do it with the anger of the Spirit of God because it's there to steal your joy. It's there to steal your vitality. It's there to steal your youth and to make you feel like you're old before your time. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus, I come against every diabolical spirit of laziness, of lethargy, of depression, of sickness, of tiredness, of fatigue. In the name of Jesus, yes, 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 yes. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, for some of you, it's not lazy. You're just tired. And the devil is telling you, you're tired. He's singing the song of tired. Cansado in your ear every day. If that's you right now, I just want you to begin to stamp your foot in defiance against that enemy. And I declare over you that you are not tired. You are renewed. You are strong. You are you are strong you are strong like Caleb like Caleb I declare over your life that if you are 80 that you are strong as you were at 40 if you are 50 you're as strong as you were at 20 if you are 20 you're supposed to be strong When you see 20 somethings and 30 somethings acting like 60 somethings, that ain't normal. That ain't righteous. That ain't right. So, right now, in Jesus' name, I speak health, health, health to your flesh, marrow to your bones. There is a freedom coming to your spirit right now. Some of you are going to get your energy back. You're going to get your joy back. You're going to get your life back. Yes, Lord. I hear in my spirit the Lord is saying the, the diseases of age. Oh. I heard that. I've never heard the term before, but I heard him say, rebuke the diseases of age. Hey which is very fitting because we just talked about Caleb. I tell people there's something in the water at hope. People age in reverse here. Yep. People age in reverse. I've seen it happen. I've seen 50-year-olds walk in here and start looking a little bit more like 30-year-olds. After a little while, you experienced that, didn't you? You came in here looking one way, but the next year you're a little younger and a little younger and a little younger. And people want to know what that is. I'm going to tell you what that is. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So right now in the name of Jesus, if the diseases of age are threatening you, arthritis, heart disease, back pains, sciatica. Premature wrinkles, bad eyesight, bad posture, slow walking, dementia, vertigo. I hear the Lord calling them all right now in the name of Jesus. And he's calling it out. Calling it out of you. In the name of Jesus. Somebody begin to give God a youthful praise. single disease of age I declare that it will not come near you he will not touch your body he will not touch your family in my spirit I just saw I don't know if you 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 intercessors saw it but I just saw things just flying off I saw them flying off 
so funny though because usually when spirits if I can see a spirit leave it leaves in a flash and these things take in their time because it's a spirit of heaviness it's a heavy spirit it's the thing that you've been carrying around on your shoulder. Somebody to shake that garbage off in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. You are covered head to toe by the blood of Calvary, by the blood of Jesus Christ. He has redeemed you from the curse of Adam. He has redeemed you from the curse of decay. He has redeemed you from the dust. He has redeemed you from sickness. He has redeemed you from pain. And by his stripes, you are healed in your body, in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit right now Yeah, I can't shake it. I can't shake it today. I can't shake what the Spirit of the Lord is saying about the spirit of Caleb. He's saying he's ready. He's ready to pour out on somebody. And if you're looking for this so that you can act young, wrong answer. If you're looking for this so you could be cute, wrong answer. But if you're looking for this because you're ready to take down some giants. Oh, it's no coincidence that the youngest son of Jesse is the one that finds five stones in a brook and goes out to Goliath. It ain't no coincidence. Woo! Because one of the things that identifies youth is craziness. Oh yeah, they will do the stuff that nobody else wants to do. But when we get old, we get smart. We get smart and we get scared. But in this generation, when the world is as bold as it is about sin, somebody's got to get bold about the kingdom of God. And somebody's got to get righteous about righteousness. And somebody's got to get bold face in the face of the giants and said the same God that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken my mortal body. And when people are being mean to you on social media, you want to cry about it. No. No, 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 no. When people are being mean to you in your job, you notice how you do now? You snail up. You curl up like one of those little worms a long time that you touch and it curls into a little ball. Is that who you are? No, let me tell you who you are. You are the one who sees a 12-foot man standing there. And you are the one who all you have is a sling. How do you remind me of that? Let me tell you what he just said to me. The Hebrew rabbis have a saying that I heard in a class a few weeks ago. And it is this. I will do what you ask with what I have got. Might not be proper English, but it sure is proper Hebrew. I will do what you asked with what I have got. You know what it's, it means? It means I won't measure the giant by the size of the weapon you gave me. All I know is if you told me that giant is mine, then what I have is exactly, is exactly what I need to take that giant down. Honey, if you will use what you've got, then the giant in the land is gonna fall. You wanna give a million dollars to build a church? And all you got is four dollars and fifty cents? It's enough. Yeah, somebody in here has got that. You come against me with swords and spears, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. You come against me with swords and spears, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Can you see in your spirit eye? Can you see David just running down that valley right now, screaming at the top of his lungs? You come against me with swords and spears, but I come against you in the name of Jehovah Sabah. You come against me with swords and spears, but I come against you in the name of Jehovah Sabah, the Lord who fights my battles. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray, oh God, that, and, and tonight is a quick touch. We just want to anoint you. We just want to touch you. And as you go, at this, I don't even want you to go. I want you to ask the Spirit of the Lord as they touch you. Go ahead, sons and daughters. As, as you, this is what I want you to say, God. Say, God, put my, set my feet on the right path. That's the prayer. So I believe just, just by you being in this church tonight, that you're on a starting line. 
but now what you need is for God to set your feet on the right path time to get busy amen so all of you all over this place you speak to the Lord on your own right now you don't have to pray long I already did that we already prayed we already agreed we're just anointing you right now to hear from the Spirit of God to hear what he's saying don't leave until you get him don't leave until he speaks in your spirit it doesn't mean he tells you exactly but he says you are mine you are called it is for this season it is for this time I speak the name cause it's all that I can do. 